peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel this is a continuation of the uh, previous lecture uh, because I had to leave abruptly unfortunately so we will uh, continue from where we left off with the numbers we finished uh, uh, 0 to 10 so we will continue uh, with 11 now so the number 11 is so we have a 1 and we have a 10 and that is exactly how we will write it from right to left so we will write 1 10 so here the 1 changes uh, uh, names from wahid to ahad uh, sorry that was a uh, for the dal from my quranic recitation uh, i'll be uh, uh, recording a video tutorial series regarding uh, Quranic recitations after I finish with the Arabic tutorial, God willing. You'll understand why I said Ahad instead of Ahad. That is called uh, qal qal Qala. I'll explain that in the next tutorial series, inshallah, and God willing. Ahad Ashar. Here, the 10 loses the uh, the ta marbuta or the tight ta. So instead of saying wahid ashara, you will say ahada ashar. For 12, exactly the same. Though instead of saying ithnain ashar, you will say ithna without the noon. Ith na. Oh, actually, I added an extra letter here. Ith na. Ith na. And this becomes the ya becomes alif maqsura. Ith na ashar. The reason the noon was removed is to make the pronunciation smoother and easier to make us um, for a smoother transition from this word to the next instead of saying ithna ashar ithna ashar and because the noon is in in reality an addition to indicate duality you can remove it if you will add another noun to it uh, later it is called idafa but the this will not be covered in this tutorial because this is either intermediate or advanced level of grammar from 13 to 19 you will add the name of the number followed by ashar so, uh, there are no changes in the names anymore it is only for one and two ahada ashar ithna ashar i should add the tashkil here ashar ashar so this will be thalathata thalathata ashar arbaata ashar khamsata ashar the same as the numbers from uh, 3 to 9 tisaata ashar and so on and so forth until you reach 20 then the name changes <coughs> the name changes to you have the root here from 10 and then we will add an a suffix to indicate 20 so it would be ish rune that is the nominative form the accusative and dative will be ishreen with a yeah instead of a wall so ish reen and ish run what happens when i start with 21 here 
I revert from أحد to واحد واحد I want to say one and twenty similar to German you would say uh, uh, you would say for example drei und zwanzig means three and twenty or twenty three so here you would say واحد and which is one letter only wow and and is normally attached to the word following it as opposed to english when you write and as a separate entity and then uh, spaces before and after <clears throat> we will cover and uh, when we continue the list after we finish the numbers god willing واحد و and عشرون or عشرين depending on the grammatical syntax Twenty two is the same, no changes. It will be its name and one, yeah, and no one if its name wahid its name wa shroon. And you will continue the same as with the tens. Twenty-three is thalatha wa ishroon. Twenty-four is arba'a or arba'a tu wa ishroon until twenty-nine. Then we change again for thirty. Thirty is the word three with a waw noon. So it will be but instead of saying ثلاثة, you you start you remove the tamar buta and add a wow and a noon. ثلاثون. And again, change the wow noon to ya noon for the accusative or the dative. Thirteen. From here, you can maintain consistency. If you want to say thirty-one, you will say واحد وثلاثون. واحد وثلاثون. اثنين وثلاثون. ثلاثة وثلاثون. And so on and so forth until number forty. <coughs> So from here onwards, we will simply cover uh, the tens. So we will cover 40, 50, because they are all the same. You simply add the wall to indicate and, because remember in Arabic, we read from right to left as opposed to English. And <sighs> French is rather interesting with, with, not with the numerical system. <laughs> 60. 70, 80, 90, 100. So 40 is instead of arba'a, you will remove the taita and say arba'oon. Arba'oon. And again, with the other grammatical uh, syntaxes, it would be arba'in. Arba'in. The same here for 50. Instead of saying khamsa, you will say khamsoon. Remove the taita or the tamarbuta. Exactly the same. Kham. Oh, oh, I think I pressed a button on my light pen. Kham soon. Kham soon. And again, yes, if you have guessed it, ya noon, then you have guessed correctly. Kham seen. Uh, 
خمسين. You should become more comfortable with the absence of diacritics now, because if you recall, we said if you see a letter without a diacritic, it automatically means a sukun. I am avoiding writing sukuns now mainly because it is rather difficult to write with this uh, light pen. <laughs> I apologize. So for 60, instead of saying sitta with a ta marbuta at the end, you will say, yes, you will remove the ta marbuta and add a wow noon instead. Situn. Situn. And here you will remove the U, uh, U, sorry, I meant the wow, <laughs> and substitute it with a yeah, sitin, sitin, and this will be a shadda because you hear the letter twice, sitin, trust your ears, if you hear the letter twice, it automatically means a shadda. So for 70, instead of sab'a, you will say sab'oon. 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 And for the accusative and dative, it would be sab'een. Sab'een. Here, instead of saying thamaniya, well, actually, here uh, there is a slight difference in spelling. Thama, instead of saying niya, like so, you will remove the tamar buta, but also you will remove the ya. So you will stop at noon. That is why I'm writing all the numbers to make sure that I cover the exceptions as well. Thamanun. Thamanun. And yes, we will remove the wall, substitute it with a ya. Thamanin. I apologize for how the dots appear. Uh, it is very difficult to write on this uh, graphics tablet. Perhaps I should write with the mouse next time. Actually, this will be much faster. Instead of saying tisa, you will remove the tamar buta and you will say tis. Come on. Oh, for goodness sake. Tis. Oon. So you remove the tamar buta and you add the wow noon. This one. And again, here will be this one. This one. Now for 100, it changes spelling drastically. The spelling is and I honestly do not know the origin of the spelling. I have been reading online and it seems that uh, there are variations with regards to how the 100 appeared in the beginning before the changes it went through. But this is how it is written currently. Ma However, it is pronounced as such. Mi a. And I know that the the writing of the cutting Hamza here disobeys the law uh, the rules that we discussed in a previous video. This is an exception for uh, the word 100 and as I said originally the word 100 was not written as such but changes had to be made later on as I mentioned before with regards to how non-Arabic uh, non speakers found it somewhat difficult so they had to change the language to make it easier and more uh, understandable so it is pronounced me eh. 
if there is a sukun or haraka, let us say dhamma for example, mi'a tu or tanwin dham, mi'a tun. And remember we add the extra noon in pronunciation with regards to the double diacritics or the tanwin. This is how we write the 100. Now, what if I want to say 101? I will say 1 and 100. So it will be written as such. Wahid wa mi'a. Though some people pronounce it ma'a to, to match the spelling. However, it is normally pronounced mi'a. Wahid wa mi'a. 101. This rule will follow you throughout the, entire, the entirety of the numerical system. You will always say, state the number here first before you move to the next one. So remember, you will always be reading from right to left. So if I tell you, for example, uh, 105 uh, or uh, let us say 110. It would be ash but without the wow this time because the number ashara is a special circumstance since it has a tamar buta so we are removing it in favor of adding the 100 word easily to it ashru ma'a if i want to say uh, 105 I would say khamsu ma'a without the wow. The wow comes later on. It comes in certain circumstances. Uh, and it also comes when you... Uh, I, actually, yeah. It comes in certain circumstances with regards to 100 and uh, 1. Uh, or uh, when it is from the t uh, tens to the 100 so 21 22 23 uh, 54 and so on and so forth but if i want to say 106 for example i would say sit to without the tamarbuta remember we always remove the tamarbuta for conjunctions sit to ma -a. I will not go into details regarding 200 and 300 and so on and so forth. Oh, sorry. Actually, I discovered a mistake I made. Uh, yeah, you do add the wow. This sutuma'a is 600. Sorry about that. I confused myself for a moment. So, Yes, so you will be using wow. You will say sittatun wa ma'a and so on and so forth. Yeah, I ended up confusing myself. I apologize for the confusion I may have caused you. Yeah, suttu ma'a, khumsu ma'a, arba'atu ma'a, thalathatu ma'a. These are all 300, 200, 500, 600 and so on and so forth. But if you will start from the right and go left, you will say wa, wahid wa ma'a, ithnan wa ma'a, thalatha wa ma'a, and so on and so forth. If you do not say the wow, then you're saying the hundreds digit. So that is why I will leave it at 100. I will end the numbers at 100 to avoid confusion and also because this will become an intermediate level uh, course. And as you can see, I am clearly unqualified <laughs> for intermediate and above. We will end with 1000, which is ALF. One million does not exist in Arabic because no one was 
that rich at the time so the number did not exist however when a person did have that number they would say 1000 one a thousand thousand so it will be written as elf elf but now we use the word million in an arabicized form as million this is a piece of trivium you do not have to memorize it at least at the current level and for some reason i I am having difficulty writing. Yep, there you go. Mel, mel, yun. That is million. Or you can say elf, elf, which is the correct term. However, any term that enters the Arabic vernacular automatically becomes Arabic, such as the word sinin, for example, in uh, the chapter of I believe it is if I recall correctly uh, uh, the fig uh, Surat al-Teen Waturi Sinin Sinin originally is an, an Abyssinian word that means beautiful the reason uh, the reason I mentioned that any word that enters the Arabic vernacular becomes Arabic is because originally Arabic is the origin of all languages, but that is a tale for a completely different time, not for now. <laughs> okay, so now we are done with numbers and days. Uh, I forgot to mention at in the prepositions list, though I did mention it before we covered prepositions, and that is عند. There. <coughs> the word or is the word aw. Aw. And does not have a word. It is simply one letter, and that is wow. And I will add a hyphen here to indicate that the wow is actually attached to the word after it. It is not a separate entity. It is attached to the word following it. Uh, we did talk about hatta, yeah, so there's no need to mention it again. Um, let's see. Uh, the word hell is a question word. However, it does not match any of the English question words. That is why I probably forgot to place it there. Hell means is there, depending on what you say after the word, is there or did you? Did you do this? Did you do that? I would ask with hell. Or I would say, is there, uh, is there chocolate left, for example? I would say hell. <coughs> so that is uh, a question word that matches is there or did you depending on what you say after hell determines the, the context also the word yabdu and tabdu the word is exactly the same except for the first letter one starts with a yeah the other starts with a t uh, these words mean appears to be uh, however the one that starts with a yeah is used for masculine nouns Remember he and she. The he uh, pronoun has the verbs, uh, the, its verb starts with a ya, yeah, and the verb she starts with a ta. Use that as your mnemonic for masculine nouns. And 
or I should say appears to be. So this is he appears to be, this is she appears to be for feminine. <coughs> we also have another word that I would like to add is kana, which means was for the singular one, of course. Singular. I know I said that uh, uh, Arabic does not have the verb to be. However, we do have a was or a where, uh, depending on if you are talking about a singular or plural. However, the plural changes uh, forms. So for, this is for the singular. Uh, I should also say masculine. Hold on. Uh, I will say uh, S and M or M and S. Masculine, singular. Uh, for the feminine, we will simply add a ta as a suffix. Actually, since we're adding a suffix, I will add it in a different color. Uh, let us use red. Canet. Uh, so this means she was. Was feminine. Singular. Canu. Once you see this wall followed by the silent alif, know that this is automatically plural form, not the dual form, the plural or the multiple form. Canu where and that would be plural. For uh, to maintain consistency, I'll write it here. Uh, I forgot, I honestly do not know how to use the uh, relocation tool on uh, Clip Studio. I remember I used it once and did, I was not successful. So I will write it here. <coughs> there is also, can, uh, when you see that, uh, actually, now that I recall, I will erase these two and write them with red instead. Canu and here it will be Kana Kana. Remember this alif when you see it as a suffix or an alif noon, it normally means the dual form. So this is were masculine dual or duality however you wish to label it or muthanna if you recall from the previous video what if i am speaking about two uh, feminine nouns uh, actually the zigzag z shape for calf then the word ends, then we will write the root, uh, sorry, the suffix, I mean. Ka-na-ta, see the ta here, but we will add the alif to indicate the duality. ka na -ta. And that was where? Feminine. Dual. <coughs> uh, okay, so let us uh, clear this and take this important word in. This is a conditional statement. 
uh, or if you are uh, knowledgeable in programming, it is similar to the while or the, the while loop or the if statement. Uh, actually, to be more uh, to be more uh, precise, we will say the if statement in programming. In is if if you do this, then this will happen. In the the condition, then uh, what else we have? Then. However, uh, then is not used with the conditional statement here. So we, we do not say if and then in Arabic. We only say if and the condition is stated immediately. Uh, sorry, the result is stated immediately after the condition without a then. Then means thumm. ثم ثم uh, we have except the word except means ليس uh, sorry uh, ليس is a different kind of except that I, I will explain shortly uh, let me write ليس here so that I do not forget Illa. And you have probably heard of this or seen this in uh, the testimonies of people accepting Islam uh, or read it on the Saudi Arabian flag. La, we will cover this uh, as well. La ilaha. Illa. Allah and as you can see this is the tetragrammaton for the name of God in Arabic Allah one two three four tetra four grammaton letters and this in Arabic is known as love al jalala which I believe would be translated into divine name I believe or as close, um, that is the closest translation for love del Jalala, uh, the name of God, the divine name. La ilaha, no God, except or but, you can say but, Allah. There is no God, but or accept Allah that is what the word uh, that is where you can use or that is what illa means except or but when it it is talking about a contrast <coughs> uh, let us see how would I translate laysa laysa is a bit uh, Laysa. That would be. <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. There is no or there is none. For example, Laysa. This is a verse from the Quran. Laysa ka. That is a prefix. Myth. That is the root. Lihi. The ha here is the accusative form for uh, or the dative form for he. If you recall from the conjugation chart that we spoke of. This prefix means like. Kamithlihi. Myth means like. Uh, um, well, it sounds as if like, like. However, uh, if you want to say 
There is no one like Muhammad. ليس كا مثل محمد for example. So you can think of it as like like except it is written as one word. كمثله شيء ليس كمثله شيء There is nothing or actually there is no thing like him uh, that M looks yep there we go there is no thing like him Laysa kamithlihi shay that is what Laysa Laysa means <coughs> Let us cover uh, negatory words. The word la means no or not. And if you are uh, negating a verb, you use, so uh, let us say uh, what I am trying to say. Uh, okay, I'll write the other negatory words while I think of an example to use here. Uh, sorry, I forgot to add the tashkil. Lem. Lem negates the past. So you can say never happened or never occurred. An incident or an action that occurred in the past that never happened. So, uh, sorry. Here you negate the past. Len, however. Len. I might as well add them. Never will happen. You negate an incident or an action that will take place in the future. So that is the uh, those are the three negatory words. Normally, if you are saying no, you say le. If you want to reject an incident in the past, you say lem or negate an incident in the future, such as the verse in the Quran that says wa lan tarda This is a fatha anka Uh, sorry, this is a sukun. An ka al yahudu al yahudu wala. There is the lamb that I was trying to think of an example for. Wala nasara. I have a feeling we did not cover Hatta, so I I will write it here. So we do not need this anymore. This will be Hatta and uh, Hatta with an alif maqsura or a pseudo alif means until. I am thankful that I'm writing these examples so that I can remember words because as I said, I do not have this scripted because of ske uh, schedule and time constraints. Uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, let's see. Tat Tat 
inte det. Mille te hum. And yes, you have guessed correctly, the hum here is the accusative, uh, the possessive noun or the accusative form or the dative form of they. We add it as a suffix here. Walan. The, uh, and tarta means accept here. An, uh, actually, let us say an first. How would I uh, translate an? Uh, it is a bit difficult to translate. <laughs> Okay, let me finish translating this verse. Uh, God will reveal the answer to me as I do. This calf, this is the suffix for ante or you, uh, singular masculine, the uh, accusative or in this case dative form of a you singular masculine. So I am speaking to you, this calf is for you so here it will be you and here is a preposition used for certain verbs such as tarda an a person accept this person uh who, who will and this is uh, never uh, never will who will never accept? Tarda is referring to, this is a verb, it requires a subject. These two people, Al Yahud, the Jews, Wala, and not even, or no, but here it will be not. Wala, and Nasara, the Christians, Hatta, until, Tattabi', you follow their religion they will never accept you until you follow their religion so an uh, i guess you could say uh, let me think of another uh, i guess we will say used with certain verbs it is it is somewhat difficult to translate the the word an in english considering it has a special circumstance uh, so this will probably become clearer for the viewer uh, through practice reading more and understanding more will help reveal what the word an or when the word an is used with which verb so i feel that i have covered the important words or the common oh uh, one more word to cover and then we can start on another list ila e la alif maqsura or the pseudo alif, and that means two. If, I, if you want to say, I go to the store, ila the store. There is also from, thankfully I remembered. From means min. To, from. To, from. Yeah, I managed to remember most of the prepositions in the second lecture. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah is uh, Arabic for praise God. Uh, though it does not, or it is not necessarily limited to praise. Uh, it, is, uh, it is rather difficult to explain. So to avoid overwhelming people with uh, too much, I will simply say it resembles praise God or praise Allah 
So yes, now I believe we have covered most of the important words that you will encounter regularly uh, throughout, throughout your uh, reading. Uh, before we start I, uh, with nouns and adjectives, I would like to cover some more verbs as well that I wanted to cover in the previous lecture, but I forgot. So we will have another verb, to go. The noun of that verb is called the heb. The heb. That is the noun. And no, you will not use it in your... Uh, you will not use this as a root for uh, uh, verb conjugations. This verb uh, matches the traditional rules for verbs. So you will rever revert it to the past tense for he, and that is the word the, he, be. That is the verb, and you use that for past tense. However, you use the spelling or the root of the spelling for the present tense as well. But of course, the diacritics do not match. If uh, you would like for me to create a conjugation chart for the verbs that we cover here, please let me know if you would like to practice an experiment and discover the, the, the correct answer by yourself, by all means do so. Uh, but if I am requested to create a conjugation chart for these verbs, I will gladly do so. I simply do not do so now. Firstly, to avoid overwhelming uh, the, the student or the learner. And secondly, because I do not want the focus to be on the diacritics of the conjugation. It is simply to cement when to use the prefix and the suffix with which, uh, with which uh, correct pronoun. That is the, the purpose. Lastly, idhep. That is, if it starts with a uh, connecting hamza, it is most likely the imperative form. <coughs> imperative. Okay, then we have the verb um, to run. And the noun for that is rakd. Rakd. And that is the noun. However, the same spelling with the differences in diacritics, of course, is the same for the root or the past tense and the present tense as well. So I will write the past tense for he as we normally do. Ra-ke-ba. He ran. Uh, past tense. However, the root uh, excluding the differences in diacritics, of course, is uh, used for the present tense as well. Present tense. And the root is three letters without a cutting Hamza as the beginning, so the imperative will be simply add a connecting Hamza. Uh, v and imperative. Okay, hold on. Let me adjust this a bit. Imperative and your cold. This verb will be somewhat difficult to pronounce because, as you can see, you are uh, transferring from a light letter to an extremely heavy letter from a calf to a bod. So it may cause complications when you pronounce it or enunciate the, the letters. 
that is quite all right. We as Arabs sometimes have problems with such words as well. <laughs> or I should not say Arabs because we have lost touch with our Arabic heritage long ago. So I should say Arabic speakers. Yeah. Next, we have to buy. To buy, the noun for that is she ra. She ra. And as you can see, it is written on the line because it is uh, preceded by a letter that has a sukun. If you see that, it automatically means it is written on the line. That is the noun. <coughs> now, the past tense uh, for this verb is slightly strange. <laughs> it starts with a connecting Hamza, which is odd compared to what we have covered. Ish, te, ra, and ends with an alif maqsur. Maksura or uh, uh, pseudo alif as we labeled it in the first lecture. Ish ta ra verb, and this will be uh, so actually, let me say this and I'll say this here as a verb. Now for the present tense, uh, it uses this root here. So I will write the present tense separately without the diacritics because it, it depends on the pronoun used. However, here it is a ya yeah instead of an alif maqsura. And it will be a ya yeah mad. So by by saying yeah mad this automatically means it has a kasra on it to say ri then you add the prefixes the respective prefixes and suffixes as you see fit and this will be present tense now for the imperative it is a mixture of this with this. So this is actually the imperative spelling, but instead of a pseudo alif, we will add the ya. Yeah. So for the imperative, this is of course imperative for the singular. I'll say v and imperative. Ish te ish te ri bai. So we will cover two more verbs and then we will switch to nouns and lastly we will end with adjectives. Let us say to sell. Here the noun is baya. Oh, these dots, I, I honestly do not know how to draw them with this uh, 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 graphics tablet. So this is the noun. Now for the past tense, this root is used for the present tense. However, for the past tense, ba -a. and that is the verb. <coughs> and that is the past tense for he. For the present tense, it will be like so after, uh, but you will have to add the respective prefixes and suffixes. And the ba is normally with a kasra because this will be a uh, yamet. And so on and so forth. And this is 
the uh, uh, a present tense present tense lastly for the imperative uh, it will be this bear Imper imperative lastly we have a verb that is misconstrued constantly because people only know one name for uh, one definition for it and that is darp this is also one of the reasons people think that islam is a re religion of abuse between spouses because the verb for this is mentioned in a verse firstly this verb this noun or verb when we convert it to a verb has a multitude of definitions if you do not believe me you can uh, download an arabic uh, dictionary from uh, either apple store or the google store or android store and then search for that word and see the list of definitions secondly hitting in islam is not the same as hitting in the western countries because in the western countries they have or at least in america what is known as a battered women syndrome they actually have a syndrome that is not a physiological disease but a sociological or a familial disease in islam we do not hit our women until they are unconscious bruised or dead hitting in islam is a form of hitting that does not leave a bruise and does not cause any pain so how would this be considered violence against the spouse hitting in islam means a light tap on the shoulder simply to remind the spouse hey uh, you may have stepped out of line with this action as a reminder but we do not slap on the face because hitting the face even in punishment is forbidden in islam because god honored the human with the face so if you strike the face that is that means you are transgressing god's creation or dishonoring god's creation so we never strike the face unless perhaps in war and you're in a battle then that is a different story but here it is not vindictive hitting it is a light touch as a reminder if if there is an argument and one party speaks out of line and it may lead to severe consequences then darb or hitting is used however because i guess english speakers are accustomed to hitting their wives to death maybe that is why they, when they hear the word hit they automatically think of this uh, i would like to remind that certain undershirts are referred to as wife beaters we do not have that uh, as an anecdote if in islam if a husband does strike his wife viciously the wife can go to uh, can report him and the judge will have the husband struck in the same manner as the wife for punishment after that the judge can ask the wife would you like to continue with him or would you like to divorce him if she says divorce she is divorced at the moment there are no courts that last months or years it is done at the moment and the husband is not acquitted or bailed by paying money for such a crime he is actually struck to remind him of what he has done so yes that is hitting in islam compared to uh, what happens in uh, western societies or even eastern societies to be quite honest <coughs> so i will use the verb to hit here 
but it does have other definitions in addition to hitting. You can say uh, giving an example, you would use that word as well, or earning, depending on the, the, the noun used or the subject, yeah, that could also be used. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, for the past tense. Ba, ra, be. And that is a verb. And that is used for the past tense. Also, this form, the same spelling, is used for the present tense, but as we said, differences in diacritics. Lastly is the imperative, and that is idrib. That is a verb, and this is the imperative. And these are the verbs, uh, very common verbs. Well, not common. <laughs> uh, eating, drinking, buying, uh, running, going. Uh, uh, actually, let us cover one more verb, and that is uh, walking. <coughs> Last verb very common and that is to walk the noun is called mesh mesh meshy that is the noun for the past tense Mesh, that is the verb, but here it is not a ya, as you can see, it is an alif maqsura or a pseudo alif, and that is the past tense. For the present tense, you will use this spelling here. Oh, sorry, I forgot to add the tashkil. For the present tense, you will use those three letters, but of course you'll have to add the prefixes and the suffixes. Verb, present tense, present tense. Lastly is the imperative. Imshi. That is verb and imperative. I may have made mistakes with regards to the tenses, so if you have caught that mistake, please let me know in the comments below so that I can correct myself and that we all benefit from the knowledge as well, including myself. I, the best part about being at fault is learning what is correct. Okay, now we are done with verbs, so we will uh, move towards nouns. In uh, the singular for noun is ism, and remember we said ism starts with a, uh, uh, a connecting hamza, but it also means name in uh, in Arabic. But if you are speaking grammatically, ism means noun or subject, the subject of the sentence, not the subject of an experiment. <laughs> and the plural is s, me, either for names, subjects, or nouns. That is the plural. So we will cover singular forms and we will identify whether they are a masculine or feminine. Uh, if the viewers would like to learn more, uh, I could make a separate video regarding the duality form and uh, multiple form. 
if people ask but how, however I just do not want to overwhelm people with a beginner level course so let us say we have the word dog dog is kalb in Arabic kalb is this masculine or feminine this is masculine هذا kalb I do not say هذه kalb however if I wish to speak about the uh, feminine form of kalb which I will not say in English because it it has a derogatory uh, meaning I will say هذه which indicates femininity هذه كل به or كلبتو depending on uh, the, the diacritic you will notice that most of the time a noun that ends with a تا مربوطة or a tight تا is feminine most of the time there are certain exceptions such as the word Usama and Hamza they both have ta marbuta at the end but they are masculine not feminine but most of the time when you are reading most of the time you will see that it is a feminine it is feminine you will either see hadhihi before it or you will see the accusative dative or possessive suffix pertaining to she uh, in in the text that is how you also know if a noun is uh, 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 masculine or feminine table is ta we Leh or Tawila too. Tawila. And that is feminine. Heavy. Student. Is Talib. For masculine. Heather. Talib. For feminine, it would be Talib. Also, Tamarbut. Talib. And Hada Talib. Uh, also, I should add whether this has a, a lunar lamb or a solar lamb kelp or kelba has a lunar lamb so i will say el kelp or el kelba i will not say a kelp tawila is a solar lamb so i will say at tawila i will not say el tawila i will say at tawila and remember, when you have a solar lamp added, this automatically acquires a shadda and keeps the haraka as well, because the letter will repeat itself. So, as you have guessed, ta only accepts solar lamps. Kaf accepts only lunar lamps. As I said, this will come with practice, but while reading, if you see the alif lamp followed by a shadda, a letter that has a shadda and another diacritic this automatically means solar lamb that a lamb that is written but not pronounced if you see a uh, alif lamb and the letter following the lamb has a tashkil that is not a shadda then that automatically means a lunar lamb a lamb that is written and pronounced let us take three and that is Shajara. And you have probably guessed correctly. Shajara. Uh, since it has a tamarbuta or a tight ta, that means it is feminine. Uh, the 
shajara and this is also a solar lamp ash-shajara uh, let us take wolf because it is mentioned in chapter Joseph in the Quran uh, let me adjust this Dhib Dhib As you can see here The Hamza has a sukun And is preceded by a letter with a kasra The order of precedence states Or the rule of power states That the kasra is stronger So the Hamza takes the form Of the stronger diacritic Which is kasra So we will add it on the plate And that is the Or uh, a masculine and this is also solar الذيب not الذيب الذيب uh, let us take well that is بئر and again preceded a uh, sukun preceded by a uh, kasra so the hamza takes the form of the stronger tashkil the bi'r the well uh, and that is a lunar lamb al bi'r not a bi'r let us take store uh Store is mit mit jar mit jar derived from the noun trading, which is t j r. So th this is derived from that. This is feminine. So I will write F here to indicate Hadihi and the store is masculine. For the store, it is a lunar lamb, Al Mijar. However, for trading or tijara, this is solar lamb. At tijara, not al tijara. <coughs> okay, let's see what else can we take. Uh, boat is actually. Uh, we will skip boat because boat has multiple words for it. Let us take lion. Though lion has multiple wo words for it, we will take the common one. Asad. Asad. <coughs> and that is had. And it is a lunar lamb. Al Asad. Not as. Not said. I cannot even pronounce it because. It is impossible. <laughs> uh, let us take another animal, elephant. And that is also the name of a chapter in uh, the Quran. It is talking about a historical event that was a challenge for the disbelievers in Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's city, or peace be upon him, uh, in his city. They were claiming that the Quran was written by him as opposed to being a revelation from God. So he mentioned, so God revealed that story, which happened during the year Prophet Muhammad was born. So he could never have written the details of the Quran so specifically when he was not even uh, present during the incident. And... That is called feel. Feel. Hadihi. Oh, sorry, not hadihi. Hadha. Hadha feel. And that is a lunar. Al feel. 
uh, bear is dub so it would be written as such but do not say dub step it is dub <laughs> and that is had the had dub add add dub not l dub so it will be solar lamb Uh, erase this just in case I need to benefit from this space here uh, let us see what else do we have uh, rope is habl and that is the al habl so lunar lamb uh camel and that is jamal jamal and that is hada al jamal lunar lamb the word jamal or camel is der uh, the word jamal is derived from beauty which is Jamal and the reason the camel is called the Jamal is because it has a hump which is an apex or it has height and that is what Jamal means it means elevation in height uh, well not in height but elevation in general or an increase in an aspect be it uh, physical beauty or beauty of the soul or personality uh, so that would be هذا جمال and that is lunar as well because it is a gem and gems take lunar lambs uh, let us say car and that is say yeah so you heard it twice, so it takes a shadda, sayyarah. And this is feminine. And the sin is a sister to the sheen, so they both take solar lamb. as sayyara not al-sayyara. Technically, the word sayyara means uh, an object or that that which walks or moves sorry but because cars did not exist uh, during the, the time of the prophet the this word has also been attributed to car because it is an object that moves but you can call sayyara uh, to a caravan as well a caravan could be called a sayyara but normally, in this day and age, uh, especially since I do not think there are caravans anymore, <laughs> there could be, I honestly do not know, considering the various trade routes established by various countries. <coughs> normally, when you hear the word sayyara, it means a car, or a person is speaking about a car. Let us take the word water, which means ma it sounds similar to a sheep bleating uh, and as you can see here it is written on the line because the letter preceding it has a sukun and as you heard so that means it is a lunar lamb you cannot say it is a lunar lamb I do not recall if I mentioned this in the articles uh, lecture, but in, st in addition to Alif Lam as the, there is also Alif Mim. But if I recall correctly, this is exclusive only to the Yemen area. The people of Yemen say Im instead of Al. They are both correct, however, but the popular one or the common one is uh, Alif Lam, not Alif Mim. I feel I did mention it. I tend to forget a lot because of the uh, 
because of the busy schedule that I have, unfortunately. Okay, so we covered a decent list of uh, a nouns. There is another verb I would like to add, and I apologize if I keep repeating or returning to verbs. As I said, this is not scripted, so I do not have a list prepared to return. And you will use the preposition from with that verb. So, min. With to go, I forgot to mention that uh, in the previous slide. To go, you will use to, which is ila. <coughs> so, uh, the verb to return, the noun of it is awda. And this is feminine, as you can see here. Awda. And it is, uh, so I will write uh, feminine. So it means I say هذه, not هذا. هذه العودة. And as you heard, العودة lunar lamb. Not أعو, أعو. I cannot even enunciate it. It is impossible. For the past tense, it is عادة. That is the past tense. Uh, root, of course. So you will be adding prefixes and suffixes accordingly. Uh, the uh, 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 present tense takes these three as the root. So it will either be written as such and this is a uh, wall med so you will automatically hear oud however if it is attached to a letter before it it will be as such so as you have guessed this is only used if the prefix is uh, alif with a cutting hamza for ana ana oud everything else will be like this so these will be present and this is a verb for the imperative it is عد for singular however for plural you will add the wow between the عين and the دال عد uh, also singular feminine you would say uh, uh, you will add the wow so do not focus on the imperative for this verb or any verb really. You uh, the main focus. I should have specified that uh, the main focus for a beginner level would be past and present, uh, past tense, present tense, and future tense. Uh, especially since uh, imperatives are somewhat strange and they are littered with exceptions, unfortunately. So it makes it rather difficult. Uh, it, the task becomes difficult to memorize the imperatives. Uh, if people would like to know more, I can make uh, a, uh, the conjugation list, as I mentioned earlier. If people would like to know the full conjugation for all the verbs that I mentioned here, please let me know. And that is for the return. Now we will <coughs> move on to adjectives. So let us take colors. White is ab yalt ab yalt black, although uh, black is not considered the color. However, uh, I am not defining this as a scientist. 
and besides uh, besides scientists define based on what is pre-existing in the worlds which means that they are not necessarily right like for example when nasa defines does not define pluto as a planet i do not take nasa standards because they are human beings i take by the standards of the creator of pluto which is god so if god says pluto is not a planet because of certain criteria then i would say pluto is not a planet S wet S wet uh, well, Let us take yellow and that would be S Fer S S Fer Green is Ach Bor Blue is as Rock. Uh, let me uh, redraw the Hamza. There we go. Uh, I will not cover strange colors such as mauve or purple, for example. Uh, these these colors would uh, will suffice for now. Uh, okay, let us see. Uh, uh, adjectives now. Before I forget, in Arabic, the adjective is mentioned after the noun, uh, the same as French, as, a, as opposed to English where uh, the adjective is uh, placed before the noun. So I would say in uh, English, I would say black car. In Arabic, I would say sayyara. Saw. Uh, Saw the. That is the adjective form of uh, black. So I would put the noun first and then the adjective. Okay, so let us take black as an adjective. It would be so the so the white by law. By yellow. Uh, I should mention that uh, these are uh, feminine adjectives. If you are describing a feminine noun, the uh, previous list was nouns for colors, but also adjectives for masculine nouns. So if I want to say a black camel, I will not say Jamal Sauda, I will say Jamal Aswad. Safra. Green. Khadra. I, my thoughts are really terrible, I apologize, but it is really difficult to write with uh, this graphics tablet in Arabic. Blue is Zer Zer Okay, so I will clear this list. Also, uh, 
I will not be able to provide screenshots of the lectures starting from, I think it was lecture three or four. I do not remember because this new computer, for some reason, all this, uh, it does not store the screenshots that I save. I do not, if, if it does, I do not know where it saves them, unfortunately. So I will not be able to provide the screenshots as I did for the previous uh, lectures. So I'll delete these. Beautiful. That would be uh, Jamil for masculine. Jamila for feminine. Jamila. And also in adjectives, seeing that ta marbuta or the tai ta also indicates femininity. Sad. Hazin and that is masculine. We will add the tamarbuta at the end to turn it into feminine. Hazin Hazin. Uh, let us see, angry, غاضب, masculine, feminine, غاضب, غاضبة or دبتون or دبتو depending on the context. Normally, adjectives take تنوين uh, as adverbs do. Not necessarily all the time, but most of the time they do. Let us take liar uh, or actually, uh, yeah, a liar is uh, an adjective here. Uh, or actually, instead of, let, let us say, lying as an adjective, because I think the Gerunde form of uh, lying is uh, used as an adjective. Kathib. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that, uh, actually, I'll uh, write it on the side here, the word adjective in Arabic means sifa. صفة. And the plural is صفات. Which also means descriptions. Uh, if you say صفة, it means a description as well. كاذب for masculine. كاذبة. Oh, I forgot to add. كاذب. كاذبة. For feminine. However, if a person is known for lying constantly, the spelling changes to كذب. كذب is if a person lied once or at the moment. كذب. The person lies constantly. And the same here, we will add the uh, the uh, uh, كذابه. Okay, uh, let us write here treacherous.
which I assume that some or most of you watching this have probably encountered a person as such. I have been, uh, well, uh, let us say I have encountered a tremendous amount of pain from this. In. That is the masculine. The feminine, you simply add the marbuta. Thankfully, a person learns from their failures, and God knows I did learn. <laughs> So that is it for adjectives.